Local School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Alberta Canola Producers Commission. What we want to do today is give you some, um, hopefully fine-tune your diagnostic skills with respect to looking for blackleg both in season with canola and also in fields that don't have canola. What can we do to evaluate the blackleg risk in a field that doesn't currently have canola in it? And so by giving you those tools, you can hopefully have blackleg a little bit more in your minds as you scout your own fields or, or other fields, if, uh, depending on what your responsibilities are and it will help you to get a little bit better idea of what might need to be done in those fields to help manage the disease. So if we look in a typical fact sheet or plant pathology textbook, there are some typical symptoms that we often see associated with, with blackleg. And so I'm going to put up on the screen here um, a canola stem. So on this particular stem, there's kind of diffuse symptoms all up and down. And what we sometimes see is a lesion that's defined by a dark border that is peppered with these little black spots. So in the lesion we see on this stem, we don't really see a, de a defined border. It's kind of a diffuse lesion that extends all along this section of the stem. But these little black dots that you see associated with the disease are typical. And these are uh, sporulating structures that the fungus that causes the disease produces as part of its life cycle. It produces asexual spores in these little black structures. These are called pycnidia. And as humidity increases or it rains, these structures swell up and ooze out those spores in a pink jelly-like or gelatinous mass. Then when a raindrop or irrigation water or something hits that and splashes it, it spreads the spores around. So within a season, blackleg fungus produces a number of these and it can cycle more than once during the growing season. So you can see it has the capability to really rapidly infect and, and spread throughout a field. So this is often what we see as a typical symptom. Now there are other organisms that can cause cankers on the stems. There's even other organisms that can form pycnidia on the stems. So just seeing pycnidia doesn't necessarily confirm that it's blackleg. One of the other things we want to do if we're going to confirm blackleg is look at the vascular tissues of the stem. So when the fungus infects the leaf, so let's say one of those asexual spores from pycnidium lands on the leaf, it penetrates through the epidermis, it grows in through the petiole and down the stem into the base of the stem. And that's where it really does most of the damage that we see economically. It forms a dry rot or a canker at the base of the stem and that will lead to the inability of the plant to transport things it needs to transport up or down and it also causes lodging and premature ripening and things. So that's kind of how the disease takes hold. One of the things we can see as a result of that infection is a darkening or discoloring of the vasculature. So if you think about the stem of a canola plant, just inside of the outer covering or epidermis, there's a ring, a vascular ring, that runs all the way up and down the stem. And so when we cut it longitudinally or in the long direction, you can see the blackening of that ring that's caused by the blackleg fungus. So pycnidia and this discoloration of the vasculature, pretty sure that that's probably blackleg that's causing the problem in that plant. So those two things give us a pretty clear idea that it's blackleg. Um, in addition to that, you can also cut the stem in cross section. And this is typically what they're doing when they survey for the disease. So they go down to where, about where the soil surface or the crown of the plant is and they'll just cut it. And then they'll look at that vascular ring to see if it's discolored. And if it's black in there, they'll say, oh yeah, there's a black leg infection. And then they can confirm to see, yep, I do see some pycnidia on the stem here. Sometimes you need to get a magnifying lens because the pycnidia are quite small. But this would be an example of one that I'd say, yeah, there's black leg there. So in a canola field, when you're looking at black leg, I'm also going to show you, uh, this is a leaf. Uh, it's been inoculated by poking the leaf with a sharp object and also putting a drop of a spore suspension of the fungus so that it can get into that wound and cause disease. So you see necrosis here around and then you also see yellowing from the inoculation point to the tip of the leaf. 
due to a toxin that the fungus produces. And then you can see this peppered appearance. Those are the, the pycnidia that are forming.